European bison yesterday and today. Everyone knows what the European bison is and what it looks like. However, knowledge of its needs, habits, diet or behavior is not so common. So let us introduce you to the European bison, the largest land mammal in Europe. Since it is the largest animal, predators, even large ones, do not pose a threat to it. Although sometimes they can cheat and hunt bison. The European bison live in herds. First, in family groups of cows, calves and young adults. There, young bison learn from cows what to eat and what is better not to touch. How to defend themselves against threats, what places to visit at different times of the year. When young male bison are three years old, they separate from their group, creating their own bachelor herds. The European bison's diet consists mainly of grasses and herbs, so they feed on meadows and pastures. They do it by walking around and choosing what they like best. It was counted how many plant species the bison eat, and it turned out to be more than 300. Daily walks to pastures cover many kilometers, so the European bison needs space. Practically several dozen square kilometers for one herd of about 25 to 35 animals. It is not only a whim, but thanks to the large, varied surface of their acreage, the European bison do not live in too much densities and can always find the plants they need. And daily walks are good for their health. The European bison spend a lot of time chewing gently, lying in the forest, where they are less bothered by insects. The female is called the cow, and the male is called the bull. The mating season begins in August and bulls do not leave the cow in heat, trying to gain her approval. They emit a very characteristic growl-like sound, known in Polish as chrutenia. Gestation period lasts around nine months and in May the cow moves away from the herd to give birth to a calf alone. After a few days of getting to know each other, the mother and calf can return to the herd where there'll be no place for a mistake.
There are several calves, sometimes a dozen, and all the cows take care of them, changing duty. It often happens that one calf sucks not only from its mother, If there is a risk, adult animals surround the calves. Look towards the risk and evaluate it. The presence of a man is also treated as a threat. But if he or she is at a distance of at least 50 meters, the bison simply ignore the observer. The position of adult cows during chewing and resting is very characteristic. Each of them observes a different side of the world. The European bison needs space, water, food and peace. We currently have over 2,000 bison in six free populations all over Poland. After the First World War, not a single wild European bison remained in the country. So how have these beautiful and majestic animals returned to us and in such numbers? It is a long and very interesting story. Two thousand years ago, the European bison could be found almost all over Europe, but the development of settlement and agriculture resulted in the shrinking of the population and living area of this species. Two hundred years ago, only two populations remained, one in the Białowieża primeval forest and the other one in the Caucasus mountains. The Białowieża primeval forest was a royal property and then a Tsarist property and thanks to the care of its owners, the European bison survived there until the 20th century. Planned hunting management was conducted in the primeval forest. European bison were hunted, but most importantly, live specimens were caught and sent to various reservations and zoos. The First World War turned out to be a critical time. The troops reached the primeval forest from different sites, Poaching caused the rapid decline of the European bison population and no regulations, prohibitions or penalties helped. Hunger turned out to be more decisive. In April 1919, the last European bison from the free population died in the Białowieża primeval forest. It took only a few years for a herd of over 700 individuals to cease to exist. European bison in the Caucasus mountains had a very similar history. After the First World War, not even one bison survived in natural conditions. But there were still individuals in zoos, so there was a chance for the further existence of the species. A dozen or so years earlier, the Society for the Protection of the European Bison was established, and it was a certain model to follow. During the Congress for the Protection of Nature in Paris, Jan Stolzmann, a Polish zoologist and hunter, emphasized that for saving the European bison, an international cooperation is required and called for the creation of a society. A year later, in 1924, the International Society for the Protection of the European Bison was established in Germany, with the participation of representatives of 19 countries. The most important goal was to make an inventory of all the European bison plan their breeding and prepare them for reintroduction to nature. A Polish branch of the International Society for the Protection of the European Bison was also established in Poznań, and thanks to its activity, the first European bison began to return to our lands. A pair of bison were brought to the Poznań Zoo. 
a male named Hagen and a female named Gathchina. The International Agricultural Exhibition held there was a very good opportunity to promote the idea of saving the bison, activities for which large financial resources were needed. After five years of efforts, the European bison returned to Białowieża, where a special enclosure of several dozen hectares was prepared for them in the forest district. Thanks to the support of the state forests and the government of that time, it was possible to start breeding European bison in that place. The beginnings were very difficult, and the event that was remembered as the greatest loss at the time was the death of the male Bjornsson. He died in a fight against another bull, Borussa, who got into his area through a fence damaged by a storm. The male Bjornsson from Sweden was a direct descendant of the European bison caught in the Białowieża primeval forest, whereas Borussa had an admixture of the blood from the Caucasus bison. Only a few years after that event, the male Plish came from Pszczyna, and it was him who practically became the ancestor of the Białowieża bison. He fathered 45 calves. At that time, each European bison was worth its weight in gold, and some believed that crossing with an American bison would be a good option. It has been forgotten that the hybrids of two species would not be able to save the European bison because they were neither European nor American bison. Such creation of hybrids was very common, even in Poland. Fortunately, all these individuals were kept in one center in Spawa. A difficult beginning, the joy of the birth of each calf, very solicitous care, these were the characteristics of the very first period of restitution. Then, during the Second World War, it was ensured that the European bison would not be hurt. It is worth emphasizing that both the Germans and the Russians who occupied the Białowieża primeval forest tried to take care of the bison. After the end of the war, there were about 90 European bison in Europe. It was not until 1952 that the first two males were released over the fence, that is, into the wild. In nature, they coped perfectly well, which meant the green light for reintroducing European bison. How fast is the European bison population growing? On average, this is an increase of nearly 10% a year. So if we have 100 bison, after a year there will be 110, and after five years, 161. The population should consist in about 30 to 35 percent of adult cows, because the herd's growth depends on them. The size of the population has been growing continuously both in Poland and in other European countries since the beginning of our century. If at the end of 2019 there were around 8,500 European bison, there will be around 22,000 of them in 10 years' time. We must find and prepare a place for thousands of Europe's largest mammals. The first European bison released into the wild were used to taking care of them. In each subsequent generation, the number of European bison grew, and the distance to humans also increased, which means that the European bison was becoming a wild animal again. Passing through several generations of close human care and reintroduction is a summary of the history of this species. Twenty years ago, 
there were almost 3,000 European bison all over Europe. Now there are three times more. This success is the result of work of many people, work called an active protection of the species. It is interesting that the European bison is strongly associated with the Białowieża primeval forest. It is, however, worth noting that only every third individual lives in it. There are also other populations under the great care of foresters and naturalists. At the beginning of the 1960s, European bison were released into the Bieszczady mountains and the Borecka forest. In the 1970s, the creation of a population in the Knishin forest was started and the West Pomeranian herd was formed in 1980. The last site is the population of the Augustov primeval forest, which has existed for several years. So far, it is small. European bison will also be resettled in the Janowskie forests and the Rominska forest. Where are the next subpopulations planned? It is not known yet, because it requires the consent of many people. The bison has gone through a so-called bottleneck. The decline in its population resulted in the loss of part of the gene pool. All European bison have only 12 ancestors, which makes them genetically similar to each other. Therefore, we study the genome of the European bison, and knowing about the similarity of individuals, we plan breeding or reintroducing in such a way as to preserve and save as much genetic variation as possible. Pedigrees of individuals born in enclosures are used to assess the genome and molecular markers are assessed for all of them. The European Bison Gene Bank has already collected DNA from nearly 3,000 individuals. The bank stores not only DNA, but most importantly, frozen sperms and oocytes. The reproductive cells are obtained just after death from animals which, for the benefit of the entire population, must be eliminated for various reasons. We have successfully managed in vitro fertilization and attempts to transfer embryos are already underway. What is the purpose of this collection if European bison reproduce so well and there are so many of them? We are preparing for all eventualities. For example, if a new male cannot be transferred to another breeding farm because of an infectious disease in Europe, then embryos will be useful to refresh the blood and preserve genetic variation. Diseases and parasites are a very serious threat to the European bison. There have been cases in history where we lost the whole groups because of a hoof and mouth disease, tuberculosis or blue tongue disease. This largest mammal is very susceptible to disease, perhaps due to reduced genetic variation, or perhaps because of a lack of adaptation to an environment where it hasn't been for many generations. Parasite invasions are very dangerous because the first post-war European bison released from breeding into the wild were dewormed for years and did not have their own natural parasitic fauna. Simply, when the bison disappeared, 
the parasite did not survive without her host. Our largest ruminant is therefore attacked by deer or cattle parasites, and it takes time for the population to adjust to this new situation. European bison suffer, for example, from telasiosis. Their eyes are attacked by the nematode of the genus Telasia. The parasite locates itself in the conjunctival sac and causes the animal to become blind. It is carried by flies. If the group of European bison is large, the flies can transfer the nematodes very quickly to many individuals from one infected bison. There is no possibility of treatment because the animal's anxiety becomes noticeable when it goes blind, and this is irreversible. Besides, wild animals cannot be treated as farm animals, because the mere fact of scaring, catching or being close to humans causes greater stress and may be a cause of death. Infected blind bison must be eliminated as quickly as possible because it protects the others and is necessary. The shot bison are thoroughly examined by several teams of veterinarians who check whether bacteria, viruses and parasites are a threat to the herd. Taking care of European bison involves controlling the sustainability, health and well-being of the population. It does not focus on individual animals. In an emergency, killing is a necessary tool for the protection of all bison. It is better to kill one bison with telasiosis as soon as possible than to wait for dozens of animals to go blind, exposing them to unnecessary suffering and a weakening population. Health of the European bison has been monitored for many years, thanks to which it was possible to avoid many threats. What is active protection? It involves activities in the environment. Mowing meadows, collecting hay, building waterholes, purchasing and lining food in winter, laying lick salt, planting old varieties of fruit trees and growing forage plots. All this so that the European bison would have a good quality food, constant access to water and as much peace as possible. Therefore, Refuges for these animals are planned in places where such peace is ensured. The most important thing is to make sure that the animal density is not too high. Bison need to be resettled and small groups of them should be formed in many places in the country. Such a system of sparsely dispersed herds is called metapopulation where the condition is that animals from different groups have contact with each other. This contact is provided by travelling bulls that can walk even several hundred kilometres in search of various cows. Small groups of animals also mean small conflicts and damages and therefore greater acceptance of the inhabitants for the presence of the European bison in their immediate vicinity. Natural groups of bison number from a dozen to about 35 individuals. We start with improving the habitat of the European bison. Since it is a grass-eater, 
we need to prepare good quality and regularly mowed meadows and pastures in the middle of the forest, away from farmland. The hay harvested from these meadows is an excellent winter feed. Foresters plant fruit trees so that bison and other animals can benefit from the fruit in the fall. Apple trees are old Polish varieties. They do not require spraying, so apples are a healthy dietary supplement. Water is important, and when there are no natural reservoirs, ponds are built to serve not only to the European bison, but also to hundreds of other species. The European bison are best observed in enclosures, without disturbing them in their natural refuges. There are more and more such farms, and the maintenance and renovation of infrastructure is a constant occupation of their owners. The kilometers of the fence require constant maintenance. In the farms you have to take care of the animals and feed them with good natural fodder. Such active protection requires a lot of funding. And it is worth mentioning about many years of activity in this field of the state forests. The Białowieża National Park and the Warsaw University of Life Sciences. Various projects are implemented to support conservation activities. The size of the bison population has recently been increasing quite quickly, but the size of the occupied area very slowly. The population of Białowieża is three times larger than 20 years ago. It lives partially outside the area of the primeval forest, occupying almost twice as much acreage. If the European bison come out of forest areas, they end up in farmland. They like winter cereals and rapeseed very much, and they will not despise corn either. Twenty bison eat about a ton of green mass a day, so if they spend some time in such fields, they will eat a lot, and even more will be destroyed by trampling or lying down. Foresters try to keep the European bison in the area designated for them by feeding them in winter. The damage caused by browsing and gnawing trees is transferred to the forest. However, the greater the density of animals in a non-increasing area, the greater the problem for both bison and humans. It is then necessary to improve the habitat and to reduce the density of the population by catching and eliminating even healthy individuals.
We want more European bison and we want them to be safe. The best proven way is to create a metapopulation. That is, many small herds spread over a large area, connected with each other thanks to the migration of bulls. It is possible to create up to 100 herds of 30 to 40 European bison in different places in Poland. We would additionally have about 3 to 4,000 healthy scattered individuals. The density would be low, the subpopulation would be under the care of one forest district. It would be an attraction, not a source of a problem. And most importantly, it is easier to protect scattered bison against diseases. Let us imagine the appearance of a hoof and mouth disease in the Białowieża population. The mortality with a hoof and mouth disease is above 50%. The population of Białowieża is 770 bison, of which almost 400 would die in agony. However, what is needed to improve the situation of these beautiful majestic animals is the goodwill of humans. Are we able to accept certain limitations in our functioning and share the territory with the European bison? Can we also accept the elimination of some individuals for the better protection and health of the entire population? Do we agree to the active protection of the species, which assumes such behavior, and thus to our active and conscious participation in the development of the bison population?